Hi, welcome back to the interview series. So we're looking at questions from top companies that need to be solved using Python. And for this particular question, we're looking at a little bit more difficult question, but if you're used to time series, this is gonna be slightly easier. But we're looking at a question from Amazon and we're looking to calculate the monthly percentage difference. So we're in Stratascratch again, and I'll just take you through quickly what you can gleam from this particular question. So let's first review the question and take a look at some of the features in Stratascratch that may help us. So here is the question, monthly percentage difference. It's rated hard, and this is from an Amazon interview. Given a table purchase, table of purchases by date, calculate month over month percentage change in revenue. The output should include the year, month, date in this format and percentage change rounded to the second decimal point and sort it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. The percentage change column will be populated from the second month forward and can be calculated as this month's revenue minus last month's revenue divided by last month's revenue times 100. Now that's a lot of information for us. So we do have approach hints and expected output. So I'm going to click the expected output to get a look at what the table should look like. And that's pretty standard if you're used to doing month over month percentages, something you're probably familiar with doing in Excel or business intelligence software. But we're going to learn how to do this pretty efficiently using some of the functions in Pandas. So we have our look at the table by, but I am going to just take a look at our table and we can see that we have a created date, a value, and a purchase ID. So let's take a look. So let's write out our approach. So we want to aggregate by month because currently it's in day and sum the value column. Um, okay. Uh, we want to get the percent difference. Also, we want to, I think that's the only two major steps that we need. And of course, sort the data frame Uh, let's see, sort the data frame by months, year. Okay, I think that's a good approach. It doesn't seem uh, more complicated than these three steps. Aggregate, and let's spell that right. And we can use a couple different approaches to this. Okay, so first, I'm going to create a monthly data frame and you could probably do this with a group by, but I'm going to do um, a resample function that if you're not with familiar with resample, you can re-aggregate your data using um, the resample function. So resample. And then I'm going to resample by month. And if you if your date column is not the index, you need to tell the function uh, which column you want to the date is on. So created created at. And we want to resample that by month. And once we resample it, how do we want to aggregate it? We want to aggregate it by sum. 
and and just to show you what it looks like, I'm gonna run it. Uh, create, oh, create it at. And you can see we're missing the columns. So let's reset the index so we get the previous columns. Reset index. And now we should have our new aggregated data. Uh, so we, we've taken care of the first step. The next step is to get the difference between uh, the months. And we, there's a really good function called a diff function that will take the difference between the second and the first row and continue and iterate down. So let's call that monthly. We can just start making our monthly percent difference. Monthly, and we want to call we want to use this same column name. And we'll do this in stages so you can see. All right, so. Monthly percent difference. I just copy that over. All right, so now we have our new column. And let's create a... Um, we want to do monthly value. So we want to isolate that column. And once we isolate it, we can take the difference using the diff function. And let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to run, let's, so we can see the total. I'm gonna, just going to put monthly there so we can see the total data frame because that's going to be the last um, row that's executed. And now you can see, we can see the difference between these two values all the way down. So it's taking the difference. So we're already achieved getting everything on the second row as um, it's requested in the question by beginning the calculation at the second month. Now we need a percentage. So we need a uh, Formula is last month revenue minus uh, this month's revenue minus last month's revenue divided by last month revenue times 100. So there's another good function we can use to get this as our denominator because we already have the difference and we just need to divide the difference by the previous month. So let's divide and we also want to take the value column. So I'm just going to copy that. All right. And we want to be able to take this row and shift it down. So all we need to do is use the shift function. Shift. And I want to shift that. Well, how many periods? One. So that's going to shift that down one. Uh, let's run that. See what happens. Yep, so we can already see we're getting very close to the answer if we look at the expected output. Now we need to multiply this by 100. And we need to round the total output. So I'm going to close that in parentheses and use round to, it looks like two decimal places. So comma and two. And let's run that. So we have, we already gotten to the answer. Now we need to get our created date in a year month fashion and only export these two. So let's see. So we want to take monthly, we want to create a new column called year month, year month year underscore month and then we want to use we want to change that into a date time so we can use pd dot date time and um we can if i remember this let's see we want to use the monthly we want to use the date column which is created at created at 
we want to, oh, I think that's it. And that creates a date time. Then we can use the date time object and create two period to tell us um, we want this at a month level. Uh, and let's try that. Nope. So what did we do wrong? PD dot, I think it's to date time. Let's try that. Nope. Oh, this is and monthly. So we can see we made a few mistakes. Monthly spelled wrong again somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, here. That's why it's always nice to have everything as DF. You don't make those mistakes. So now we have this column, which is the same as an output. And let's just isolate those two columns for our answer, year, month. And then let's also get the revenue underscore diff. And then percent. Okay, sorry. Now we have a data frame. So we needed to wrap that list in extra brackets so we can get the final data frame. Let's see. I think that looks pretty accurate. I don't think we need to match the data types because this says an object. But let's see if we can get the right solution. Boom, we got the right solution. This is great. OK, let's see um, what the other solutions were. So we used a resample. Oh, someone else used res this is This is mine, resample. I'm sorry. Um, I was like, wow, this is very similar to my code, but this is, this is me. Um, so other approaches are a group buys and then pd.datetime and here's a shift. So a lot of people follow our method. All right. This is great. Okay, so this was a question from Amazon. It was hard. We can see that just by utilizing some functions that we can kind of break down a complicated problem very easily using some of the native functions in Pandas. And if you really want to get really good at dates, which you should, uh, you should definitely look at, you know, Stack Overflow, for all the functions that are related to dates. Because when there are questions sometimes in interviews that ask you to forecast, make sure you document how you're going to approach this problem. Because as you see, you're going to make mistakes and it may take time to actually get to the final result. I hope that question helps. Please uh, leave different approaches that you would have taken in the comment section below.